Hi, I'm Mark Cleveland. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today you're going to be seeing in this very short film me testing out some new uh, speed lights uh, with a controller. Never used a controller before um, it's for, T for TTL photography. Many of you will know that I'm a big manual flash fan. Um, but uh, again, I've got to adapt and change and kind of just see if there are benefits and so on. So at the end of a very, very busy day um, in studio, we kind of uh, stole our model Rio and actually took her outside for kind of some cookie test shots and things really. <laughs> Trust me to pick though, the kind of the miserable rainy days uh, um, kind of actually on the coastline where we're based. The, the first thing is when I'm using battery operated flashes of any kind, I want to make sure that they're dry uh, during the course of the, the whole um, shoot of course and that's why we just plastic bag things so if I was using the likes of honeycombs and diffusers or whatever it would be basically the bag is going to destroy all that anyway so realistically the only thing I can add on to the flash is going to be let's say a gel which you'll see later on now just to keep um, the model as dry as we can of course we're going to be using umbrellas in some of the shots and especially in the first setup part just, just to make sure that all the settings are right. Uh, we're using some smoke canisters uh, to, again, add to the effect. Because the scene was all wet and damp and kind of hazy anyway, the likes of the foggy kind of look uh, made it kind of work quite well and things. I'm a big fan of these smoke flares that we use. Uh, we just buy them online. Using two speed lights, as I was saying to you, uh, these are just the Yongno. Um, the equivalent of a Canon 600 um, EX uh, kind of speed lights with it, but basically this is just uh, cheap as chips. As I said, I've got the controller, which is the part that fits onto the top of the hot shoe of the camera, and from there I can control plus or minus more power uh, and working in a TTL method on the actual camera itself. So I still set my aperture, I still set my shutter speed, um, basically, but I'm then telling the uh, flashes how to perform within the actual exposure itself and things really. Simple setup, uh, looking for a three o'clock lighting and a one o'clock light, which gives some kind of separation. But just having the option there to go in and change the flash settings from the top of the camera kind of allows me to change the setup a little bit. Uh, to be fair, I probably would still work in manual mode, um, but when, of course, I'm teaching or making so many films to the Academy based on the likes of speed light, I need to actually adapt myself into actually being able to kind of show and demonstrate the power of TTL as well. Uh, just a bit of a heads up, really, when using smoke flares, um, I like them coming towards camera position, which you might think is mad, because basically you're getting covered in fog and smoke yourself. Um, but I think it brings a little bit more of a surreal um, element um, in towards the, the whole kind of scene. So we usually have the smoke flare behind the, sub, uh, the subject. To get a little bit more um, kind of separation uh, with the smoke or colour in the smoke, perhaps, uh, we'll often move the separation light from the 2 o'clock or the 1 o'clock position directly behind us, so actually into the 12 o'clock position. And depends on how far away she is from the flash, of course, depends how much we're allowing the diffusion of the colour uh, to actually kind of break itself up. So when it's very close and very low in power, we're going to get more saturated colour. When it's far away, it diffuses itself through the smoke more, of course. If you're overpowering this as well, you're going to get more of a pastel kind of colour. So you've got to decide on the subtlety or the kind of the aggression of the colour that you want within the photograph itself. But let's face it, when you're photographing a beautiful model, um, dressed as she is, on a great location, you've had some kind of flash in, a bit of colour gel as well. Let's face it, if you can't take a good photograph of that, basically there's something wrong. Better go back to being a butcher's boy.